Hi, welcome to Bob Harper Jukebox Amplifier Repairs. And on the bench today, uh, we've got a Wurlitzer uh, 543 stereo amplifier coming for repair. Um, this is one of those amplifiers <laughs> you never think it's going to come off the bench. And to be honest, I've, and I've told the customer I'm still not 100% happy with it now. The noise floor is higher, I think, than what it should be on one of these amplifiers. And I've got a feeling it's probably to do with the actual PCB itself or possibly uh, leakage induction from one of the mains transformers. It's got a bit of buzz to it, which I don't think it should have. But uh, honestly, I, I don't know. It's, I've done as best as I can with this amplifier, and it sounds a hundred times better than when it came in. But it's just this noise floor problem I'm a little bit concerned about. Um, the only thing I can do is send it back to the customer um, and pay for the work that it's been done and see if he's happy with it. If he's not, then I think the next um, thing would be able to replace this PCB, which is obviously going to be quite expensive. Um, and talking of expense, it's been quite a bit of money up to now, mainly due to the valves. Um, three of the 6973s were internally shorted, so I put a new set of four in there. 7199s, one of them was fine, the other one was internally shorted. Um, these are extremely, ridiculously expensive now. They can range from £50 to £100 each for these valves. Um, obviously, if both were gone, I'd do the conversion kit and use different valves. But as I did have one old stock, uh, new old stock one there, I have replaced that one valve and both valves are perfect now. Um, but in the future, for these 7199s, I don't think replacing them with what was there originally, 7199s, would be an option because, you know, they're looking at like with the postage getting over 100 pounds each of those now in the uk um which is absolutely ridiculous so i put one in there which i've had for a long time and obviously let the customer have that a lot cheaper than, than what they go for now because i've had it a few years um so i'll just charge them what I, I paid for it at the time um but that's the last one i had anyway 12 au7s both of those were extremely microphonic um, which I've had to replace, and they're with just JJs, so they're reasonably priced. The two 7025s were fine. Um, so out of the, what was there, 10 valves in this thing, seven needed replacing. So that's, you know, a couple of, you know, hundreds of pounds that is now with the price of these valves. So obviously I don't want to spend hours and hours and hours on this amplifier chargeable, which I've done actually. I've spent hours on this amplifier, but I won't be charging the customer for that because I'm still not 100% happy with it. Um, and but I've done as much as I can to make the amplifier as best as it can be. Um, I needed a new mains lead because the other one just was falling apart. Um, what else have I done to it? Um, the volume control was not the correct volume control in this uh, amplifier, and obviously the tone shaping was not right, um, so it didn't have a lot of bass actually. It sounded a bit tinny, this amplifier. So that was another thing. Uh, the 7199 shorted out. And they've taken resistors with it. Um, some were open circuits, some were extremely like double their value. So I replaced the uh, resistors that were needed there. Um, what, on the treble controls, one didn't seem to be very effective, and it was the PEC itself, which you can see I've put a new one on that channel there. Um, so that needed doing. A couple of odd, odd resistors uh, around the input stages and the AVC stages were um, open circuit or then double value again uh, so the AVC wasn't working um, it now is uh, along with the squelch uh, both channels are quite well balanced now um, so yeah he's all done have a little listen it sounds quite nice um, but it's just this noise floor issue and I don't know if I've done one of these before I've done the very other very similar um, Wurlitzer stereo amplifiers to this, uh, I think so, 2300 is, it, is out of, with a separate main supply, and I've never had this problem with this uh, background hum, or buzz, more of a buzz actually, uh, which is usually related to heaters, um, but I've done every trick in the book to try and keep this amplifier and make it quieter, it's a hundred times quieter than when it came in, but it's still, in my opinion, not um, as uh, as an amplifier should be it shouldn't have no background noise but anyway what can you do you can only do your best um, and you can't keep throwing money at it because I'm not 100% sure what the problem is I've got a nasty feeling it's the actual PCB itself because um, everything else checks out all the voltages are correct on the amplifier everything checks out it's got this background buzz that I just cannot get rid of but anyway I'll put them on for you I've um, got my iPod plugged into it a uh, bit of volume. 
treble. Bass. So you hear it sounds very nice, plenty of bass, plenty of treble, everything as it's best as I can get this thing. Um, I've had it on the bench now oh, a couple of days trying to track down and do everything I can to get rid of this buzz, but I just cannot do no more with this amplifier than what I've done. Um, so I think, it's, as I say, internal leakage, perhaps in this transformer here, um, it supplies the heaters and the HT or the actual um, PCB itself becoming conductive and causing humming buzz. But anyway, I'm going to send it back to the customer now, box it up, it's been on test all morning actually, um, and see what the guy thinks. Obviously you have to pay for the work done so far, but if he's happy with it or he can put up with a slight bit of buzz, then that's fine. But if he wants more work done, then the next uh, stage I think would be to replacement PCB. Um, and if that don't cure it, there's nothing else left then apart from the transformer. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. Bit of a long-winded one, but uh, you get these outs now and again. That uh, whatever you do, you just cannot get them 100% perfect. This one I'd say is 90%. That's so what I'll do now. I'll pause the um, video and we'll have a look underneath. So here we are on the underside of the amplifier. This amplifier has been worked on by someone else and partially recapped, um, but I've done the electrolytics, um, part of the dub voltage doubler capacitors there and the um, smoothing caps over there in place of the can that's on top uh, which is now just there for show along with these um, two that are on the other side of the chassis here um, as I said I'd alter some component values around the volume control uh, to give a better bass response than what it had uh, PCB I've gone all th through it checked everything there's no dry joints or anything like that anywhere uh, checked all the ground in everything as it should be but as i say just cannot get rid of this blooming hum anyway or buzz i should say more than hum anyway that's about it for this one the next one up on the bench will either be a rockola that i've been waiting nearly a month for transformers for or i've just got in a ami r145 to do so either one of those two will be up on the bench whichever um i get spares for and can complete first okay thanks a lot for watching